So in this busy world, we all wear a lot of hats, right? Right? And for me personally, um, I wear the hat of father, husband, food guy, um, teacher, a lot of different things. But sadly, not very many of us wear, you know, actual hats. And I'm here tonight to change that, and I want to invite you to wear hats every single day. What we wear says a lot about us, and it also um, is something that affects the way we see ourselves as well. Clothing is kind of like a second skin that covers nearly all of our actual skin, and it helps to protect us. It also gives us an opportunity to express things about ourselves. Now, the apex of clothing, of course, is the hat because it's the top of your head. And these products, hats, clothing, they're the closest products to your body, so it's super important to know who made them, a little bit of history about them, and where they come from. So let's take this hat, for example. Um, this is a Panama hat of the fedora style. And the fedora originated in around 1880 and has been popular for decades. Uh, re reaching its height of popularity in the 1920s through 1950s, uh, it was a general purpose hat. It's also a Panama hat, and oddly enough, all Panama hats are actually made in Ecuador. Now, this particular hat started as a toquilla palm in the rainforests of Ecuador. And someone took the time to harvest it, take it home, process it over many different steps into very thin, light strips. And then it went to uh, another coastal town called Pile, and a master weaver like Don Simone began weaving a hat. And he spent hours daily over a tripod weaving and weaving the hat. In the case of the hat I'm wearing, uh, it takes weeks to do. In the case of Don Simone's hats, it takes months because he only does two hats a year because it's such a fine weave. After the hat was, was kind of formed, it was sent to Graham Thompson, hat maker. And it was Graham that decided that it was going to be a fedora. And Graham took it into his workshop, took the basic form and formed it into a fedora. And then he added all the detailing, the ribbon and everything to make it into a complete hat. So every time I wear this hat, I think about the village in Ecuador. I think about all the people in the chain that had a hand in making the hat. And also I'm proud to wear their workmanship. I also hope that it says something about me personally, that I care about craftsmanship, uh, that I care about quality, and also maybe that I have kind of a classic style, hopefully. But what about you? Why should you wear a hat? Well, there's some very practical reasons to do it, particularly in the state of Arizona. First of all, sun protection. A very a narrow-brimmed hat will protect you from the sun, but then if you go to a broader-brimmed hat, it will cover your face and it will help you uh, to prevent skin cancer, which is like a big deal in this state. If you talk to any dermatologist, they will say that you should wear a hat. Then also, as the weather gets cooler, it helps to keep your head warm. But for me personally, the more exciting reason to wear a hat is to be able to express yourself. Whether that would be kind of fun and happiness, or maybe something of a laid back style, or even something that's perhaps a little bit more urban and sophisticated. There's a style of hat for all of us. Now, there's uh, a couple of kinds of hats that I'm going to talk about first before I get into classic individual hats, which is going to be the, like the core of my presentation. So uh, those are group hats and caps, both of which actually are the bulk of the market for hats in the United States. So a group hat is a hat in which you kind of associate your identity with that of a group. Uh, in the case of a uniform hat, it shows your cohesiveness with the unit and also perhaps shows authority. For, for example, like if you're a police officer or a fireman, it helps to, to designate that. But there's another kind of group hat in which basically a logo is planted on a pretty generic hat. And I'm not a huge fan of these hats, by the way, but um, those are hats in which your identity then is, a, is kind of blended with the identity of that company or organization. And somehow you're advertising um, their brand and at the same time, hopefully, it's something that makes you feel better in so doing. But I think it's against individuality to do, um, to do uh, logo hats. There's also caps. And of course, the baseball cap is by far the largest sale of hats in the United States. 
But there's several other caps that are uh, perhaps a little bit more stylish and more interesting. Uh, flat caps for one, and then also uh, cadet caps, military caps, mal caps, whatever you want to call them. Um, those are very, very um, interesting hats as well. But now we want to move on into the classic individual hat. Uh, the classic individual hats come in two basic types. There is the straw hat and the felt hat. And within the straw hat category, there's Panama's, which we started talking about, and also Milan's. So as we know, Panama's actually come from Ecuador. The way that you classify them is by the fineness of the weave, because that's an indication of how much time it took to make the hat. A very coarsely woven hat might be a few hours to produce, whereas a fine hat could take months and have the, the texture of linen when it's all done. All of them start out as a little like eight-legged knot that is slowly woven and woven and woven until you get out to the extent of the size of the hat. After that's done, then it goes to a hat maker and they can make any number of styles from it, from a Western hat to a modern city hat. The Milan hat is a little bit different. Um, it's actually made from wheat straw woven into a little ribbon and that ribbon is slowly sewed together in a spiral outward, outward, outward till you get to the very edge of the hat. And just like the Panama's, it can also be styled in any way that you'd like after that. It can be a Western hat, it can be a fedora, it can be whatever. And the best of the Milans are actually made in small villages in China that have been making them since the uh, early 1800s. Straws are considered to be pretty much warm weather hats. You can wear them year round, of course, if you want to, but they're basically warm weather hats. So at that point, it's time to move on to felt. And uh, felt hats have, have a huge range. The best felt hats are made from felt that's made from uh, rabbit fur or beaver fur, or some combination thereof. And some lesser expensive ones are made from wool or synthetic felt. Uh, there's various thicknesses, there's all kinds of colors, and so there's this huge range of what you can do. And similarly, you can do all the different hat styles and sizes uh, in felt. So it's a very, very flexible medium. Now let's talk about some of the um, terminology of hats. Uh, the upper part of the hat is called the crown, and the crown can be either short or tall. It can have a pinch front or it can have some other detail. Uh, then there's also the brim, and the brim can be very narrow, called a stingy brim, or it can be wider, wider, until it's actually wide enough to give you great sun protection. And then last but not least is the band or ribbon, and that gives you a lot of customization, different colors, styles, uh, knots, things of that nature. So now that we've uh, talked a little bit about terminology and about hats, let's talk about applying it to you personally, like the, the shape of your face, your shoulders, how does that affect um, what you should wear in terms of a hat? Well, I have a round face, so for me, anything that accentuates the roundness, you know, I definitely round all over, but <laughs> anything that accentuates the roundness is not a good thing. So uh, a bowler, which is dome-shaped, is definitely not for me. But if you have a long oval like Sarah or like Renee, then it looks great. If you have a rounder face, what you want to do is go for a taller crown and more of a horizontal brim to add balance to your face. And then when it comes to shoulders, if you have broad shoulders, you should go for a broad brim. And similarly, if you have narrow shoulders, you should go for a narrow brim. It's just kind of proportionate as you look at your body and, and the hat brim. So those are super important items, getting the face shape and then kind of the, the brim correctly. Now, there is one style of hat that's pre pretty much universally usable for all face shapes, and I would recommend this as your first hat, and that would be the fedora. And Lauren is wearing one in the photo, and I'm wearing a fedora now. She's wearing a felt. I'm wearing a straw. But uh, it's a great, flexible hat. It was the first hat that I ever bought. I remember 33 years ago. It was Jackson Square in New Orleans. I bought a Dobbs uh, Panama, and it was a fedora. And that started me on my voyage of hats, and I've never really looked back. The nice thing about the fedora is that it's a good indoor hat, outdoor hat. Uh, it's good for dressing up, dressing down, and so it's super flexible. Plus, you can manipulate the hat to express different emotions, things that you would like to say. So, for example, if you have the brim tilted down, it's more of a traditional look. If you snap the brim up, then it gives you more of a youthful, like, night on the town look. Uh, similarly, the way you position it on your head 
can make you look serious, or if you tilt it back, you can look more approachable. And so it's a hat that gives you a lot of options to express your personality. We've talked a little bit about hats and you've seen a bunch of people of all ages and all stages in the slides wearing hats. They've all looked great, but it's interesting. All of those hats are actually my hats. And so you can imagine if they were actually the correct size for the people and matched properly, how much better they would have looked. So the point is, is that you know something about hats, you see it looks great on people, and so I want you to take the plunge and go out and buy a hat, a hat that you like, probably a fedora to, to start. And I think that once you start wearing it, and a key to wearing it is wear it with pride and confidence. Do not look sheepish. You have to look like you own it. If you start doing that, you'll notice people saying, wow, you look great. Look, oh, I love your hat and that will not be your last hat. You will start buying more and more hats. And the nice thing about that is then we will all together be able to enjoy the hats we wear.